morning everybody this is Stephen Pugh of the of uh, the Home Bible College I want to do another video video number 37 called the exposition of the word now in this particular paragraph in this particular passage we're talking about the uh, chapter 8 we're talking about the subject of the main purpose of ministry and the last session was all about prayer and the ministry of the word this time it's going to be about the exposition of the word so the exposition of the word now there are a number of methods of preaching there is topical preaching now topical preaching is where we take a particular subject of the bible in which one would need to draw from many places in scripture to make one's points now there's also apologetic preaching in which we would have a particular question which is answered in the preaching or even perhaps a series of questions uh, related to the same subject. Now Christ preached the Sermon on the Mount in this manner. His subject was the Messianic Kingdom and he takes it through a number of stages. Firstly, who are the people who will enter the Kingdom? Secondly, on what basis will they enter the Kingdom? Thirdly, what is the true meaning of the righteousness of the law in contrast to the false views of the religious leaders of Israel? What will happen to those who build their families on false teaching? And what about those who build their family build on Christ's teaching of the kingdom? So Christ was preaching thematically and he was preaching apologetically and he was preaching evangelistically it was definitely the gospel of the kingdom that he was preaching there is also the preaching of a text of scripture and there is the expounding of the text in terms of a chapter or a paragraph uh, now the key type of preaching and teaching uh, for a pastor is what uh, ought to be called the preaching of the exposition of scripture this means preaching through books of the bible but this certainly is not to be a dull or boring. It is to be preaching the scriptures in such a way that the message of scripture comes alive and the hearers hear the voice of God through the text of the scriptures themselves. The purpose of the expositor is not to present five different points of view and leave the congregation hanging, not knowing what to believe, nor is it to preach in such a manner that people are more confused after they leave than when they arrived. The preaching must be clear, it must have a single message and it must have a simple interpretation. Reference must might be made to other points of view but only to illustrate what the scripture actually is teaching itself. Preaching should be of such a nature that the impression given will be that the, that what is said did actually come from the text of Scripture. It will not be given in such a way that the preacher's own views are foremost. Rather, it will be that the Scripture itself is foremost and the preacher's task is to present what the Scripture itself has to say to us today uh, through the message of his prophets, which is committed to us in his word now in nehemiah chapter 8 verse uh, 2 we read this so on the first day of the seventh month ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly which were made up of men and women and all who were able to understand he read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he had faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men women and others who could understand and all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Besides him, on his right stood Mathaliah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkanah, and Masalah. And on his left were Pediah, Mishael, Magjah, Hashem, Hashpadarath. Uh, Zechariah and Meshulam. Ezra opened the book 
all the people could see him because he was standing above them and as he opened it the people all stood up ezra praised the lord the great god and all the people lifted up their hands and responded amen amen then they bowed down and worshipped the lord with their faces to the ground the levites jeshua bani serabiah jamin akub uh, Sabbathai, Hodai, Masala, Kila, Azariah, uh, Jozabad, Hanan, Pelaniah instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of the Lord, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. This is probably a model of pastoral teaching. It was focused on the reading of the scriptures. It was read from a raised pulpit made of wood exactly for this purpose. And it took quite some time. It was read clearly and the preacher read and made the people understand the tense and the meaning of the words that were being used. The effect of the preaching was electric. As the people heard the scriptures read and expanded, they wept and they broke their hearts. Such was the effect of the preaching of the scriptures in times of revival. Dr. Martin Lowe Jones says again, the way in which the Apostle Paul puts it is, I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. That is what determines the message or the sermon as such. It is what the preacher has received. Uh, the other term Paul uses is ambassador, which brings out a, a very clearly an ambassador is not a man to voice his own opinions or his own thoughts or his own views or even his own desires. The very essence of the ambassador is that he is a man who has been sent to speak for someone else. He is the speaker for his government, or his president, or his king, or his emperor, and whatever form of government his country might have. He is not a man who speculates and gives his own views and ideas. He is the bearer of a message he is commissioned to do this and that is what he must do preaching is not an essay it's not something to be said it is not a lecture it's not just an educational teaching through preaching we are we partly educate it is not primarily that people need to learn but the people need to hear what god has to say it is not the people are uneducated, but the people are ungodly. It is not primarily that people learn to live a better life, but that people learn that they are sinners in need of salvation and believers in need of the Spirit of God to live holy lives. The sermon should really be expository. This does not mean that the sermon is to just be a running commentary although that might be better than most sermons. The sermon is something that arises from the passage. It is the message of God from this particular passage of the Bible. It should be clear to the listeners that what you are saying is coming directly out of the scriptures, and that is expository preaching. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones recommends the use of a pulpit Bible to give the impression but more than just an impression that what is being preached is in fact the scriptures. Your preaching should answer a number of questions. First of all, what is this passage saying and what does it say elsewhere on the same theme? Number two, what is the progress of thought in the passage? Number three, what did the author really mean by what he says? Number four, what did the original readers make of all this? Number five, in what way is God's message for us today? Number six, in what way are we to respond to this message? When Christ went 
to his home synagogue. He stood up to read the scriptures and was invited to do so. He, he read it clearly and then just said a few words. The impact was explosive. He explained that this scripture was fulfilled in their ears today. He applied the scripture to the very day in which he spoke and to the very moment in which he stood up to read. Now, let me ask you a few questions. First question is, how would you describe your preaching? Now, you can ask other people. Ask them, what, what, how do you describe uh, the preaching? Uh, is your preaching expositional? Does it come out of the scriptures? Thirdly, do you preach from the actual text of the Bible? Okay. Fourthly, in what way could you improve on your preaching? The next one, have you ever preached right through a book of the Bible? And lastly, what is the impact of your preaching? Does it cause men to weep as it did in the days of Ezra? Does it cause men to think hard? Does it cause men to respond? Not to you, but to the scriptures. Does it have that effect? Now, there's a lot of heart searching questions and I wish you all the best. I wish you that you will go away and you'll spend some time with the Lord and you will re-examine what it is that you're saying, what it is that men and women are doing when they respond to it. So God bless you. We look forward to speaking to you on the next occasion. Bye for now.